In this video, I'm going to be representing isobaric processes on the PV diagram. So in thermodynamics, the PV diagram is commonly used to provide a visual representation of some kind of physical process. So let's take the example of some enclosed gas with a piston. So this gas over here has certain measurable quantities. And these are all macroscopic quantities that we can measure. They are pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature. So this is an ideal gas. PV equals NRT is satisfied for this ideal gas. And one important condition we're going to impose is DP equals zero. So the change in pressure is zero. That means the pressure is constant. And that's what the word isobaric actually means. It means constant pressure. So what can change? Well, volume is allowed to change. Temperature is allowed to change. This constant R is a constant, so it's not going to change. N is also fixed because it's a closed container. And a closed container uh, can't uh, release or uh, allow any matter to enter. So no matter can be exchanged with the surroundings. Everything is enclosed over here. So that's why this number of moles is constant. So these guys are constant, and this pressure has to be constant for an isobaric process with an ideal gas. But volume and temperature, they can change accordingly to keep this value constant. So we're not too worried about N uh, because this is a closed system. But we are worried about P because P usually can change. The pressure is usually free to change. If you push something or if you compress something, you're going to get a change in pressure. And if something expands, you're also probably going to get a change in pressure. It's a very special case where P is constant. So let's have a look at what this looks like on the PV diagram. The PV diagram is shown over here. P is this vertical axis. V is the horizontal axis. Now, a horizontal line on the PV diagram corresponds to an isobaric process. Sometimes this is called an isobar. So an isobar is a horizontal line on the PV diagram. Uh, no other shape is going to satisfy the isobaric process. Why is that the case? Well, it's because all of the points on a horizontal line share the same coordinate for pressure. The volume is, is different. The volume is free to change, but the pressure is fixed. So at any horizontal line, you're going to have an isobar. It's just going to be a different pressure. Lower pressures are going to be horizontal lines that are closer to the horizontal axis. And horizontal lines that are further away from the horizontal axis, they're going to have higher pressures. But temperature is actually proportional to the product of pressure and volume. So that means the bigger the product, the bigger the temperature. So Higher temperatures are over here. Lower temperatures are going to be over here. That's a lower temperature. That's a higher temperature. Why? Because this product is actually larger. If this P is constant and this V is increasing, then obviously the product is going to be larger. So that is an isobar on the PV diagram. What are some other interesting uh, observations we can make on this visual representation? Well, you can see that there's actually a rectangle that gets traced by this horizontal line. And this rectangle corresponds to the work done. Why is it the work done? Well, that's because this is the area under the curve. And the area under any curve in the PV diagram corresponds to the work done if it's a reversible process. And if the only type of work is compression expansion work, which for our purposes, with this piston over here, that is the only type of work that's going to be occurring. You're either going to have compression or expansion. And let's look at those two cases. So what would happen if you have compression? What if the piston is being pushed down and we're compressing this ideal gas? Well, what are we going to have to do to make sure that this pressure doesn't change, to ensure this condition for the isobaric process is met? Well, let's have a look in the diagram. If we start at V2 and we move towards V1, we're going to begin at this point, and then we're going to travel along the horizontal line and finish at this point over here. And what's going to happen? the volume is going to decrease. And this is actually going to compress the gas. This is isobaric compression. So what's going to happen? Well, the volume and the temperature, they're going to adjust so that P remains constant. And if you look at one of the other videos in this playlist, we actually go through the equations for the work, the heat, and the change in internal energy. But this video is just to give you a visual intuition as to what's going on. So we've talked about compression. Now let's talk about expansion. In expansion, what we're going to do is we're going to see the piston move up. So you can think of it as the, the gas is 
pushing the piston upwards. So if the, the piston is being pushed upwards, we begin at the lower volume. We begin at V1, and then we move from left to right along this horizontal line, and we finish at V2. So again, we've traced out the same rectangular area underneath. And that rectangular area is again the work done. But it's the opposite side because we're moving now from left to right rather than right to left. So from left to right is isobaric expansion. From right to left, that's isobaric compression. And during isobaric expansion and compression, uh, this is not thermally isolated. So the temperature can change. And we know the temperature must change because the temperature for these points is actually larger than the temperature for these points. Why? Because the product of the pressure and volume is larger. And for an ideal gas, uh, that means that the temperature has to be larger. Because if this product is bigger and these guys are constant, this guy has to be larger. So what have we actually discovered with this isobaric process? We've discovered that every curve that is a horizontal line is an isobar on the PV diagram. We also discovered that the area underneath that curve corresponds to the work done during either the isobaric expansion or the isobaric compression. We've also looked at what this looks like in a physical system, uh, namely this piston uh, with a container. And keep in mind, the Q is non-zero. So the heat can actually flow in or out. So why is that important? This is not a thermally isolated system. Heat is free to move in and out. And this is not, uh, the work is also free to, to change. So the work can, can actually change as well. Why? Well, it's because compression and expansion, by definition, means that there is work. If the volume is changing, then there is compression slash expansion work. So these are some important uh, qualitative descriptions of isobaric processes. So the takeaway message for this video is anytime you see a horizontal line on the PV diagram with no slope, with a, a completely flat horizontal line, that corresponds to an isobar at, temp at the pressure P. And every point on that horizontal line has the same P. Volume can change, temperature can change, but the pressure cannot change in an isobaric process with an ideal gas.